Last week we had the second seminar in our instructor seminar series, which was Undiscovered Treasures, Getting to Know UW-Madison's Learning Technology Toolbox. It's kind of a mouthful. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a follow-up to our first seminar that Chad Shorter and I did together, um, entitled Building in the Basics, where we talked about some fundamentals um, for pedagogy, for goals, organization, about how you would incorporate any type of, an, of technology into the classroom. And with this one, we want, and from here on out, we want to expand into particular tools. So this one, we gave a very quick overview of about 25 different undiscovered treasure technology tools. It was a quick whirlwind yeah, of tools. Yeah, whirlwind of technology tools. Yeah, I think the idea was to just sort of pre present many so that hopefully you might see one or two that sort of would appeal to you. The idea wasn't to try to use them all. Right, exactly, or to teach you how to use them all. Exactly. Right? And we kind of divided all of our tools because we had so many and we had to go through them so quickly into five different categories. And our first category, presentation, publishing, and content delivery tools. And some of the goals with working with these are to provide, you know, a new way of interacting with course materials for the students, um, maybe a real world kind of scenario or case or problem that the students could actually interact with that pulls out some key information from the course material or maybe, you know, is in a quiz format. Um, and it also is very student-centered, right? The, the, you're putting a lot of the onus of, of the learning process on the students. Yeah, a lot of this is really about just making it less the instructor delivering the content to more either making it interactive for the students or uh, something that they're actually going to get the experience of, of making content that's kind of that real world aspect. Right, that and, and about. the process of doing that is also useful for the real world. You know, they Most might have to do that in a job or they might have to do that in some other non academic context. Most definitely. Right. Um, the two that we talked most about, Case Scenario Builder was the first one. Right, and I, I can talk a little bit about Case Scenario Builder. It's basically a little interactive tool that's web based that you could put into Learn at UW or anything else that will help students sort of walk through a case. It's almost like there are mini quizzes or a choose your own adventure. And it's really easy to add images, to add video. So it's sort of a multimedia interactive really. And then the second one we talked about, um, Learn at UW ePortfolio. Learn at UW is a tool that a lot of instructors here on campus use, but the ePortfolio is maybe a newer component that some of them aren't quite as familiar with. That's right. It just came out of Pilot, so now it's available to anybody on campus with a net ID and it's a really student focused tool so the students um, or instructors for that matter could use it to gather a bunch of materials together assignments papers pictures and video from travels it doesn't really matter and then using those materials you can put together small websites that you, you could use to show an instructor you could use it to show a a prospective employer and to sort of show how their knowledge builds over time. Great, great for students and instructors too, right? Right, and yeah. again you're, you're developing those skills of learning how to communicate mm -hmm. on the web which is really important. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And the ones that we wanted to talk about but we just didn't have time to talk about were Moodle, Learn at UW Course Builder, the Library Course Pages, and then Lecture Capture which is actually not an online tool but a service in some of the mediated um, classrooms on campus where the instructor can capture the entire lecture. And these are all things that people can contact us to find out more right, about. Right, yeah. And even though they're very interactive with the, stu the students being responsible for much of their own learning, they're very instructor structured and centered. Right, and, and the instructors still do matter. But right. the students are getting a little bit more ownership too. It's kind of fun. The second one we talked about, and it has some overlap with the first one, um, collaboration and communication tools. So these are very important for um, allowing students and instructors themselves to do some pretty important collaboration. Right, and we, we actually had a grant recently about collaboration. We found out that students don't really know how to collaborate. So this is one thing that they actually do need the experience and a, a little bit of coaching to help them figure it out. Great. Well, we can do that. Exactly. And these tools can help. We talked about... Um, the two we talked more in depth about, or the three, I suppose, Google Docs and apps in general, um, uh, sites and blogger, and then with Scholar and collaborative sites, which are two different tools, but they kind of operate in the same way. Right, right. right. So with Google Apps, it's kind of a nice tool if you're working together on a paper at a distance or even in the same room. It's, it's, we've heard from students that it's really a, an, an easy way to collaborate on, mm -hmm. on writing. Mm -hmm. 
And then um, with Scholar and Collaborative Sites, they kind of function in some of the same ways that these other presentation tools can, where they can help structure an entire course, provide a blog, or provide you know course components, um, a lot of interaction with the students and the instructor. Is yeah. that correct? A lot of the things that you'll see on the internet, like posting and commenting, mm -hmm. or wiki-like common editing, those are elements that are in both with Scholar and Collaborative Sites. And unfortunately, we didn't get to talk about WIS Chat, but that was another tool that we wanted to throw out that's there. a lot of options on campus for IM, and that's a good one. Yep. And so this is um, for implementing in the classroom for, you know, pedagogical ideas. Uh, probably another good one to start off the semester with and not throw at the students in the middle so they can have, you know, a learning curve for how to, how to work with that. Um, and you can help, as an instructor, you can help it structure your course maybe a little bit better um, and figure out how you'd like to work with it. So um, there might be some, some pre-semester, pre-course organization that you, you, you think about and you keep in mind for your goals, how you want to use these. Yeah, again, if, it's, if you're going to have an authentic collaboration, it shouldn't really be an add-on. It should be something where they're going to really be working on a problem that they've got to work on together that wouldn't make sense just to do alone. Right. Our third category, which seems like it might be a little bit boring, but it's actually really exciting. It and makes things easy. Totally makes things easy. Um, admin tools. So um, helping you with organization, becoming more efficient, very, very useful, right? That's right. These are the things that, again, in the real world, you're probably going to be using things like a common calendaring system or something like that to, to help you collaborate a little bit better and so why not start early. And we talked about Qualtrics, um, which is a survey tool. It's a really easy survey tool, um, even for research purposes, I'd really recommend it. Mm -hmm. Great for doing evals, if you us usually do a mid-semester eval, mm -hmm. great even for getting some feedback. Like, um, and we talked about Doodle, which is or you know a, a tool, an online tool that helps you set up meeting time. Yeah, basically somebody can say, here are a few suggested meeting times, and then everybody goes to that website and fills out their name and checks out the times that work for them. It's really quick and easy and takes out the hassle of trying to figure out what time does works for everybody. Yeah, sounds very simple. Um, and we didn't get a chance to talk about WISCAL, Classless, or Lesson Share. Those are more to check out to yeah, help your collaboration. Yeah, and, and come talk to us about, right? Exactly. If people have questions, we'd be happy to help with that. The fourth category we talked about are m uh, w multimedia tools. And we know that a lot of people already interact with things like iTunes and iMovie and YouTube. But mm -hmm. we wanted to highlight um, some particularities about how they could work in the classroom and uh, maybe some ways that they can collaborate with some of these other technology tools we've talked about. Right, yeah. We, we thought it was important to talk about these tools kind of as a suite. Because if you talk about doing video or doing multimedia, it's going to involve a number of steps. You have to shoot the video or get the audio. You have to produce it, edit it, and then distribute it um, so that students can watch it. So there are a number of steps, which means a few different technologies to learn. But that doesn't mean it's necessarily hard to do. No, but it might be something important to keep in mind for your organization and for training your students that there's, a, there's possibly a learning curve associated with that. Right. It means that it'll take time for you to learn these tools if you're the one that will be doing this, or for the students if you're having students produce videos they're going to need the time to learn these tools as well. And we talked about iMovie, briefly touched on iMovie, mm -hmm. iTunes U, um, what else do we talk about? Audacity, Audacity and YouTube. Audacity and YouTube. So these are all tools that you can use to capture, edit, distribute. The, they're basically things that you might need to learn about if you're thinking about doing multimedia. Right. And pedagogically, one of, one of the things I, I like about multimedia is it allows um, you to do what they call the flip. And this is something I, I always get get excited about talking about, but it's where you're basically going to offload the things that you might talk about during class time and instead you're going to talk about it in maybe in a brief audio or excuse me, a brief audio podcast or in a video. And that way that time that you have in the classroom you can use for collaboration, discussion, things that really take advantage of the fact that everybody's together in a room. Mm -hmm. Great idea. And it also creates that kind of seamless continuity between what you're doing in class and what the students are doing outside of class, what they're maybe expected to be doing on their own time. Mm -hmm. So I really, I really like that. It, Lots of points of access. Exactly. And it keeps them involved with what's happening in the classroom. It makes it fun, too, right? right. Whenever you're throwing in music or um, a video clip or something else, it makes it engaging yeah. for them. Yeah. Even, even little things like that do count. Right. 
The last category that we didn't really get to talk about in depth, but partly because some of these tools are very new to us also, are emerging tools. And we thought that we would just give you the information um, and throw out some of the names and let you know how they work and uh, the instructors know how they work and then um, see where it goes from there because these are some that we are, I at least am relatively unfamiliar with, have just come to my attention and mm -hmm. um, that we're, you know, playing with too. Yeah, there's definitely grand opportunities. Mm -hmm. if, if you think that there's a gap in teaching, um, by all means go look for a grant or talk to us and we can help you try to find an opportunity to really meet uh, a need that hopefully will fit a, a lot of uh, different situations. Yeah, we love working with tools that we're not quite as familiar with. And we talked about, we mentioned um, LSS Mobile, which is a pilot program that we have here at LSS where we have a case of iPads that we are distributing to instructors or checking out to instructors to um, help them it, kind of as a brainstorming project, it, what can we do with this? Um, yeah, it's a really cool project, and, and an, another mobile project um, that some people in my office are working on is called Eris, and that's more iPhone-based, but it's basically a game that's based on locations, so um, you play a game based on where you are in the world. Mm -hmm. And then we learned about Syntax Untangler. And that's another one that was actually funded by a grant, mm -hmm. and it kind of helps you pick apart the syntax or the grammar of a sentence. Right. And um, and then what, another thing we wanted to mention that we didn't really get a chance to mention in the building and the basics was to keep in mind accessibility when you're using some of these tools. And so it's it's really something that's not hopefully something extra that you have to think about. It's 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 something that can be a valuable addition. So an example like creating a transcript for a video. That's something that now you have that text that you could search. So that's something that everybody benefits from. Or the same thing with a full text PDF. These are all things that everybody benefits from, so it's just really good practice. Right, and it's relatively easy, too. It, it in usually most cases, is, right? Yep, yeah. That's right. And, yep. and if it's not, we'll try to help make it easier. Great, yeah. Um, and so our, from here on out in the seminar series, we want to be able to talk about within the 25 tools and, and the many other ones that we didn't get a chance to mention, um, talk about specific pedagogical and instructional implementation for some of these tools. So uh -huh. like we got to mention, um, you know, online discussions and, and fostering some, some online collaboration and communication in our seminar series here. The next one, fostering and implementing online discussions, will actually go into depth with some of those tools that are good for doing that, um, show you how to implement them in your classroom, give you strategies and tips for doing that, getting your students involved in that. So hopefully that'll be uh, and engaging. Yeah, sounds interesting. I had fun presenting. So. Great. Yeah, me too. <laughs>